Coach, we'll get your uh, opening thoughts and then we'll open the questions. Yeah, no, just uh, really proud of the guys. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you look at it, we're, we're, we're 1-0, and and that was the goal, you know. You look at everyone's non-league records and schedules, and it's just it's so hard if you don't understand the teams in the league and, and who's playing who. It, it's really irrelevant other than just using it to try to get your team better. And so um, going into this game, you know, we're 0-0. Zero, zero. So the goal is to get to 1-0 and and to play well. I thought we did a really good job of it. I thought it was a really bad start, obviously. Um, you know, obviously on the defensive end, we, uh, you know, we gave them so many threes in the first half. I mean, they hit nine in the first half, only two in the second half. But of those nine, I think they hit four or five in the first, I don't know, three, three, you know, three to five possessions. And a couple of those were, you know, were scout mistakes and things like that that we really value. What I'm proud of is when we dug that hole and got down 12, you know, I thought our guys kind of hit the reset button. You know, we made some changes rotational-wise. Uh, and from that point on, I'm looking at the box score, and you know our biggest lead was 21. So we flipped that game by 33 points against a team that I think is good. Um, you know, six and six, they've had three legitimate Division One road wins. So they weren't going to come in here and, and be on their heels or scared or anything like that. I and mean, they've they've been in a lot of situations. So I thought we did a good job, and I thought we really over the course of the game imposed our will on that defensive end and cut the bleeding. We were bleeding early on, but cut the bleeding, and and um, you know some phenomenal individual performances. Uh, as a team shooting 69%, but Brock at 8 for 8 and Langston 8, eight of 8, that's from the field, is phenomenal. Jeremy really had a huge game. Zach Block had a huge game. So just uh, just was really proud of the team. I thought in, in the first half, one of the things um, that I noticed, you were shuffling your lineup, just trying to find some chemistry because they came out shooting the basketball oh, yeah. really well. And I said out of the broadcast, I said, he's trying to find a chemistry lineup. But once he gets one, he's going to stick with that lineup yeah. in the game. And when you brought Reynolds in the game and blocking those guys, they seem to turn the momentum yeah. around a little bit as well. Well, with you know, with the injury to start off with, obviously with with Dejure out, you know, we already were trying to figure a few things out. What's the lineup going to look like? Because I do feel like um, going all the way back to that CU game. Obviously, they beat us. You know, beat us pretty bad. But the second half of that game, we made a few little tweaks, and I thought we played really well. So we tried to parlay that into the Air Force game. Felt really good about it. And so that was the goal. And then obviously, you know, injuries happen. And so. You know, going into this game without without Dejour, we had to make a few adjustments and tweak it around, and it just wasn't totally working early on. So some guys, once we kind of settled in, some guys stepped up, and and like I said, just really proud of them. Talking about Langston today, I mean, not only is it off, yeah. five, eight of eight, twenty points, and, you know, hit the big three to kind of you know put the feather in the cap on a career day, but I thought he was great defensively mid first half on uh, against McLaughlin, who started out I think three of three from the three point line and, and ended up three of eight. Um, in the game. Is that what it was? Yeah, so I knew he hit a bunch of them early on. Three of eight. Um, and now uh, Langston, you know, we had multiple guys on McLaughlin, but McLaughlin is, was a huge emphasis. He's their highest usage rate, obviously their leading scorer, but so much stuff goes through McLaughlin, right? And they've kind of created his role for the people that really follow. Last year, uh, Xavier Fuller was a very similar player for those guys. A really hard guy to match up, but they'll post him up, they'll run him off screens, they'll let him play one-on-one. -on -one. And he can hit tough shots. I mean, he's hit the game winner that McLaughlin hit at, at Incarnate Word was unbelievable. So he's got uh, some of that in him. And so, yeah, for him to start off with all those threes, I was like, uh-oh, this is going to be a long night. And absolutely, Lang had a great night offensively, but at the same point in time, I thought his, his uh, defensive integrity was really good. I thought the conference out, outside of the league play really did well yeah. this season as well. And, and talk about... How did that prepare you guys for this moment here compared to doing your games in the first uh, part of the preseason mm -hmm. now, but now you're a much improved ball club. Talk about the maturation process and the building of yeah. the chemistry. We are a much improved you know, ball club, and, and uh, the thing that's been consistent throughout is, is we've had a legitimate good team chemistry. I think our, our connectedness has been real uh, through, you know, through the wins and losses. And, and um, when you play the non-con in the big sky, you're going to have a variety of matchups. You know, you're going to have maybe a couple non D1s. You're going to have a couple top 20 games that you have to play against. You know, this year for us, that would have been CSU and CU. Um, if you're lucky, you get enough like level games. A lot of those are going to be on the road. Um, so, you know, of our first 11 games, seven were on the road. And so you just you get a little bit tighter as a team in, in, in a good way. But I just think that, you know, the team's grown, man. And, it's a team that's got so many different guys that can step up. I honestly believe we got like 11, 12 guys that are legitimate pieces, just can't play them all. And so when a guy like DeJour is out with an injury, other guys get opportunity. You know, Connor Creech hasn't, he didn't get in against Air Force. 
He didn't, he didn't get in. I thought his 10 minutes were just, just huge today, uh, as an example. Um, and so I just think that there's just been a lot of, uh, lot of growth, and, and every night, theoretically, someone else can step up, and I think that makes us really dangerous. You've talked for a couple of years now, last year notwithstanding, but Zach Block's offensive ability. I thought yeah. he, he came out with a little bit different mindset tonight. Uh, he that did. First, that first three he took, I don't know. I mean, it got, it got off like a rocket. But uh, really, for him to settle in with 14 points and go five of six, four or five from three, uh, his offensive mindset, I thought, really kind of helped set a tempo when they were hitting their threes early. Yeah, I think his mindset, knowing, you know, DeJour, DeJour's like the sixth leading scorer in the league. And so to not have DeJour, I mean, it's never just, hey, one guy's got to step up and save us. But I do think that his mindset was right. You know, he got the start. He was aggressive. He hit that three early on. But it, it goes back to, again, like against Air Force, he hit two. But he really hit three because he got fouled on one. And he was aggressive in that game, too. So I think that that light started to come on because we believe that he's a good shooter. And, um, you know, talking about Zach, too, it's like five defensive rebounds, four assists, zero turnovers. But we chart winning plays. He must have had, like, ten winning plays. I mean, early second half, close game. Ball fumbles around under their hoop, and that big guy goes to pick it up, and he lays it up. It's still a five-point game, and somehow Zach scrapes it out, and the guy throws it out of bounds. Zach's laying on the floor when he makes that play. Those are the type of plays when you say, well, how did you stretch it out? It's, it's not the, the shots and the makes and misses. It's those winning plays, and he, he has to. We'll chart it, but he, he has to have you know, a million winning plays in this game. Coach, we talked earlier this week. Last four minutes, first half, first four minutes, second half, y'all see the struggle, yeah. especially – the last five or six games. Today you went on that 16 number run during that time. Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah. I mean, how big was that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I looked at the, at, at the data today, and um, and it did show. I mean, there's 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 a straight pattern that we struggle in halves, close halves, and we start the game great, but we don't start the second half great. Same guy. So I mean, who knows? We we got to figure it out. But um, today I didn't know we closed it so well, but I knew in the second half, you know, it's a what, five point game, and it, it went up to 14, 15 like that. And that just was, you know, I think a, a group, you know, we started lengths in that second half with, uh, you know, Riley Brock and Jaron and Zach. And, man, they were just, they were clicking. So let's just roll with it. And on that note, I know it's only one game into the conference schedule, but I have a num the number one score in the league basically for the whole game. Mm -hmm. Number six score in the game for the whole, you know, for the whole game. But you still have five guys in double digits. What does that statement make for the rest of the league? Well, I think it, I think it shows, you know, again, we, we don't want to just be, Folks on our offense, but at the same point in time, yeah, like when you have the leading score in the league and you got the number six, you know, leading score in the league, and and didn't have much production out of those uh, out of that those two dudes, um, you know, a guy like Brock that we think Brock should be shooting from the field like 65 percent. He just doesn't miss around the rim, but he struggled recently, and not crazy struggle, but no, shooting 45 to 55. But now today, eight for eight. He's not going to be eight for eight every game, but we think he's got great touch around the rim. So I just think guys really stepped up. They play within themselves. They didn't, you know, put on the uh, Superman cape and just say, hey, I'll, coach, I got gotcha. you. You know, everyone just kind of played their role, and I thought we got great shots. We played within the flow of the offense, and our defense turned into offense in the second half. I haven't studied the, you know, the transition points or whatever it is, but I thought it was really good in the second half. And then, you know, we, we really lived at the rim, and that's what we did against Air Force, too, and we're, we're really good at finishing. And so if we can get to the rim and finish, it's going to open up those threes as well, and that's been a big deal for us. First part of the season, you were taking 25, 30 threes a game. Yeah. It seemed like something changed in the second half of that Colorado game. And then last yeah. week when you went down in the Air Force, you were down six or seven in the second half. It seems like when you attack the rim more, you're a, more, a better offensive team, which helps your defense. No question. And I think getting our distribution of shots kind of a little bit more in the line with what it's been. Both these last two games, we've taken only 23s. And, and we've, you know, we're 11 for 20 today, 9 for 20 against Air Force. We can really shoot it. But when you stretch it to 25, 30, that variance can go all over the place. And part of that's on me trying to control where we can get some stuff around the rim, you know, in terms of sets and plays. But then also, to our guys understand what we're trying to do, and they've done a great job of buying into that. Yeah,